Hello and uh, welcome. If you're here, you're probably uh, an unfortunate dope uh, like my friend here that uh, bought this generator well over a year ago and I was busting his chops daily or at least weekly uh, to uh, get it out of the box and start it up and um, he never did and sure enough here we are over a year later it's out of warranty and uh, we needed it and um, it started up once and uh, we thought we had everything working we brought it out to uh, uh, a job we were doing which was uh, to work on on this guy's truck uh, I'm retired so I don't have a job but anyway we went out to his uh, truck to work on his air conditioning and we needed the generator to work and uh, it wouldn't work it wouldn't start and uh, we brought it home and we worked on it again we disconnected the oil switch um, and sure enough it started up and ran and uh, we thought we had it all fixed brought it back out to the guy's truck again where we needed it for uh, uh, power for a vacuum pump for his air conditioning and uh, it wouldn't start again and it hasn't started uh, since and so it's been over 24 hours I've been dicking around with this thing trying to avoid the inevitable and you can see I have it already partially disassembled um, geez you know I just realized I never even told you what kind of generator this is this is a uh, Predator from Har Harbor Freight 3500 inverter and uh, like I said, I've been uh, working on it now for the better part of a day, uh, trying to avoid the inevitable. And the inevitable, I think, is that uh, it's either the electronic ignition or it's the coil. And the coil, the coil, as far as I can tell, is buried in here. This is the spark plug cap buried behind here somewhere. I have the drawings that show it buried behind there somewhere. And of course the carburetor is here. Uh, uh, air cleaner. I don't even know what the hell this is. I have no idea. I have to disconnect it to figure out what it is. But uh, anyway, that's where I am. Let me take on a little tour here. This is the rear of it. I've got the rear covers off. This is the front. I did some disassembly here. Behind this panel, there is a um, connector. Uh, it's shown in other videos if you want to research it, but uh, uh, there's a connector back there that uh, is used with this on off switch, multifunction switch here, so that when it's in the off position, it grounds the um, ignition uh, so that the engine dies. And uh, I disconnected that. I already told you I disconnected the oil switch and as far as I know those are the only two kill functions they have on this generator so I wanted to get them disconnected to see if I could get it running again and like I said it's not running so walk around to the other side here I don't have a lot of room here in the garage the camera it's on a tripod but I'm gonna move it around this might be a little too close but on this side the starter motor, I don't know if you can see my finger here, starter motor here, down here, buried down here is the electronic ignition, okay, and these connectors are all the connectors uh, mating up to the electronic ignition, and I believe this is the cable, because it's going off in the direction where I believe the coil is, and I believe this is the cable for the coil. I've measured this, i measured resistance across the two pins for the coil, and it's completely open. The coil is available from uh, Harbor Freight, believe it or not. If you go to their website, and you look up this Predator 3500, and um, you look at the product, often on the right hand side of the page it says spare parts available. And it lists the parts that are available. The electronic ignition is not available from Harbor Freight, but the coil is. And I have no idea what the coil cost. Not a clue. It's probably, probably under $100, I would hope. So anyway, 
That's where I'm going now, and I'm not going to, uh, I might show the reassembly, but I'm not going to tell you how I disassembled it to this point, because, um, you know, if you need to be told that, uh, and you can't figure it out, you probably shouldn't be working on this thing anyway. So this is a little too long. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try and figure out what it takes to get the coil out. This is connected to the coil, and, um, it's buried behind here somewhere. Uh, there is a plastic housing, and that's what I'm worried about. This is the plastic housing I'm talking about right here. This whole housing. There's only four bolts that hold it on, but it looks like, it appears, that all of this has to come out of the front um, to get that shroud off. It's possible that um, after I uh, get this air cleaner off and uh, the carb out of the way, or at least the air cleaner off so I can see what's going on in here. It's possible I might be able to just disconnect the four bolts on the shroud and pull it forward far enough um, to get at the uh, coil. Uh, that's my hope anyway, but uh, that's where I am right now, and so I'm going to continue on with this job until I either break something or... Uh, we have to throw this thing in a trash can. This is, he paid close to $900 for this. He didn't buy it on sale or anything, no coupon or anything, over a year ago. And we got about total run time, we got about 10 minutes out of it before it uh, died. Five minutes the first time and about, uh, let's say we got 15 minutes total. About 10 minutes the second time before it just up and quit while we had a vacuum pump attached to it. Okay, so I uh, I ran on long enough with this, so let me get to work. I don't have a clue what this thing is. Some kind of canister. On there. And there. Once I get this out of here, maybe I'll take that off. It's really on there. It's stuck on there. I'll take these off. Got the clamps right up against each other. The reason I'm making this video is so that I can have a record of what I'm doing here. I'll put all this junk back together again. Judging by the number of uh, threads I've seen, or the number of videos I've seen on YouTube thus far regarding this. Uh, generator doesn't appear to be uh, too um, reliable. Sorry right about that. The freaking hoses are really on here, man. This was, uh, this didn't have anything on it at all. Some kind of, I don't know, charcoal maybe? Charcoal canister? Who, who the hell knows? This junk they put on our uh, stuff these days for 
for the greenies, satisfy the greenies. Well, let's not leave enough room to get the cover off. Oh, Jesus. It's going to be a struggle here. I can see that already. Can you get the freaking cover off this thing? This is what happens when you take a simple machine and you wrap it in plastic. Overcomplicated. I gotta say one thing about it. When it, it did run for 10 minutes, it was extremely quiet. So it has that going for it. What do I do with the other one? Whenever I can, I put the bolts back in the holes. Alright, let's see what else we got here. This I'll forget which way it goes. It goes this way. That's what I mean about making a record. Let's make sure that this thing is still recording. Okay, it goes that way. And there's a single bolt in here that holds the housing on, I believe. A single bolt. I might have to look at it with a flashlight. Looks like. Hopefully it's the same. Nope. Not. Another socket. I'm uh, rapidly running out of room here. Especially now that I have the camera set up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's got another nut here on the on body, and hopefully it doesn't have any behind it. Watching camera. I'm gonna forget where all this stuff goes. I'm gonna be recording. Let me make sure. Sometimes this damn camera shuts off by itself. It pees me off. Okay, that one went there. And there was two nuts. There's a carburetor input. can't see. The two nuts I took off. One was on the inside, one was here, one was on the inside. This is the uh, intake to the carburetor. Put these nuts back on. And then there was one on the bottom, uh, on the back, right here. We got yet another hose. Another hose. Turn the flashlight off. Another hose. Yeah. Okay. Huh. 
I saw in another video a guy was uh, questioning what this hose was for. It's a clip here, and it, it appears to go nowhere. And uh, what that is, if you don't know, I'll give you a little education here. Uh, I don't have a flathead screwdriver, but there's a screw right here in the bottom of the carburetor bowl to drain the carburetor bowl. It's a flathead, and you open the screw, and the fuel will come out. And what this hose is, is a, a vent. It's just like um, any pipe that has liquid flowing, you have to have air, you know, coming back in also. So it's a vent. That's why it goes nowhere, so so to speak. Um, interestingly, when you open this in the off position, the front panel off, with the fuel tank front panel off, it will drain the bowl for storage, drain the gas out of the bowl. If you put the switch in either run or start, which is choke, full choke, doesn't matter. Uh, this front panel switch is actually a fuel switch also. So what will happen is when you open this screw, it will not only drain the bowl, it will drain the tank. So that's good to know. If you can actually, you know, get one of these generators to work, that is. Instead of having to work on a, a brand new generator that's got less than uh, 10 minutes on it. Anyway, that's what that hose is. Okay, welcome back. So, to get this carburetor off, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. You have to remove the gasket, and there's a little gunk on the gasket, so it'll fool you into thinking that, uh, um, you know, you have to do more to it than just remove the gasket, but that's all you really have to do. So remove the gasket, and then you have to work it loose. There'll be a little gunk around the uh, holes. But you do have to, it looks like, have to slide this whole thing off together because there's a pin behind here for the choke that you cannot see, but you can't remove that pin. It can't be removed unless you take this off in one piece. So let's see if we can do that. If you try to force this, you're going to bend the pin. So the whole thing has to come out like this. Oops. Once you get past the uh, the two studs, there's the pin I'm talking about. If you try to force it, you're gonna bend the pin. And the pin goes into this. That's how this switch works, by the way. The switch moves the cable here. So in run, in start, it closes the choke, and in run, it opens it back up. In run and stop, it opens it. That's how it works. So uh, my worst nightmare is coming to fruition here because they did indeed bury the coil under this plastic housing, which has to go forward. And it looks like if I wanna, let me see if I can get this out a little bit more. Got a hose here. Yep, it's behind the housing. Okay, so uh, I drained all the fuel, as much as I can get out of it, out of the tank. And uh, left it open for a while, so the rest of it could evaporate. I'm sure there's probably still more fuel in here. Right now I'm going to take off the uh, fuel line. This fuel line goes to the front panel switch. Um, so I got a paper towel in here, to hopefully to catch what's, whatever's in the line. I don't know if I can do this one-handed, but we'll give it a shot. I just ordered the coil from Harbor Freight. Not too bad. With shipping, 25 bucks. The coil, so... I haven't seen the coil yet, of course. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I'm wondering. A lot of these coils make electrical contact through the screws to the chassis for, for a ground. I'm wondering, because this thing was intermittent. It ran a couple times. 
and uh, then just stopped running. I'm wondering if it just came loose in there, if the screws came loose. We'll see when we get at it. Freaking lunacy here with this, with the way this thing is constructed. Of course, they don't build these things for maintenance. They uh, build them for ease of their own manufacturing, and they put them together in a certain way. Uh, the only uh, thing that's really designed for maintenance is the uh, spark plug and and the oil filler. Everything else is uh, designed for their convenience, ease of manufacturing. I know I'm an engineer. We used to do the same thing. So I'm going to put the camera down here for for a second and uh, pull this hose off. It's probably uh, it's going to take take a, a bit of uh, force to get it off there. I can see it's formed on there pretty good and it's probably stuck, you know, like most hoses. Okay, so I got the fuel line off. All I need to do now is there's four bolts holding the tank to this frame and hopefully the whole thing will lift off. These are uh, longer, longer bolts. Got this one loose. <clears throat> You can see there's a rubber shock mount mounted to the uh, <clears throat> metal frame of the tank. Only the bolt and the washer come out. The rubber stays behind. Like that. So, keep these separate. And I'll get the uh, other two on the other side and I think this thing is going to come off. Okay, so tank's off. And uh, still haven't taken the carburetor off, <clears throat> but the <clears throat> you can see the uh, spark plug lead here, and the coil is right behind the cover, plastic cover, right here. You can see the wire here coming in. This is the uh, coil wire. And like I said, I'd be curious to find out whether or not it just worked itself loose. Uh, or if it's electrically defective, we'll see. All right, let me shut this uh, shut this off for a second. So, um, let's see the camera here. There's a bolt right here on the plastic shroud. One here, one here, one here, and and. I guess on the other on the other side is probably uh, yep one right down here, and the plan is to try to slide this whole thing forward without having to do any more disassembly. But my plans always crash and burn, so we'll see what happens. But I have a feeling that I'm going to have to be uh, pushing this whole the whole front panel out. Uh, probably going to have to take off the uh, support here. We'll see. Uh, and this bracket's probably going to have to come out. I'm, I'm trying to avoid it, but I know the inevitable. So we'll see what happens. Well, like I said, my plan usually doesn't, uh, doesn't go well. This damn thing, so I can get it in camera view, this cover has a screw. I don't know if you can see it on the... See down there? There's a screw. Right at the very bottom of the cover there's a screw. So not only the bolts, we got that one freaking screw down at the bottom. And uh, that one screw, unless I get, get a screwdriver that's uh, just the right length, I'll bet you I'm going to have a hell of a time getting that screw out because I have no access to it that I can see. No direct access to it. So in the interest of uh, moving on here, I just made a command decision here. I'm going to try to remove the entire front panel. In order to do that, this wiring harness has to be uh, disconnected. Everything has to be disconnected uh, that goes to the front panel from the generator. 
block, which I this is the generator block. I call the generator block. So we're going to disconnect all this stuff and um, the starter and the starter solenoid. This is the solenoid, I assume. Starter solenoid, uh, the battery cable to the starter solenoid, and the uh, negative lead here to ground. That also goes to the front panel. Everything that's in this harness. And then after that, there are these um, nuts that are attached to these studs. And I went and looked at the, uh, the drawings, and these are studs. There's no nut below, thank God. And uh, it looks like if I remove those, I'll be able to move this whole panel out of the, out of the way and that'll give me access to the front of this this damn plastic shroud here all right well wish me luck i already took off the uh the wire that goes to the uh solenoid here this is the control wire you can't mistake it anyway it only goes one place um I need to take the battery off and the negative battery terminal goes to the block, ground on the block with the motor mount there. Uh, and the reason I'm filming this is so that I don't forget where all this stuff goes. This was the oil switch, which I'm probably not going to connect up anymore anyway. But I just got to get these leads off of here and then... Hopefully take out those uh, nuts, and I should be able to get that whole front panel off. I finally had to remove the uh, side panel that had the uh, hand crank on it. You got to re be really careful with this. Um, you know, you got to take the knot out, but uh, be sure you don't let loose of the rope, uh, because then you got even bigger problems later. What I did was, I took a pair of forceps and locked it like this on there so that I could uh, undo the rope, undo the knot in the rope, and then put the handle back on without the uh, side panel. And uh, now I need to remove these two bolts in this bracket because they're attached to the front. And I think I got everything else disconnected. Uh, just got to cut this tie wrap here. I just noticed because it's connected to the ignition module. But everything else should be disconnected. And um, like I said, I should be able to pull this thing out once I remove those four nuts from the studs on these two um, side supports here. All right, these um, nuts... On this side where, where the battery compartment is, you can see they got a, a rubber floor here for the battery. I'll pull that back and you can see the two nuts. Um, this one you can probably get a socket on, not too hard, maybe even the back one. On this side, they're hidden and so there's a little bit more work to get this off on this side. But doesn't look too bad though. There uh, appears to be a bracket screw behind this panel, a bolt that attaches to a bracket back here, and I uh, have to remove it. In order to do that, you have to remove the, uh, the uh, switch here. You need a long screwdriver to do that. That's yeah, off. Oop. And that bolt right there right there what is that a Torx an Allen too much light it's an Allen it's an Allen uh, once that's out of there a lot of this should fold out of the way off to the side and then below it is the um, electronics for the inverter. So we'll see how this goes. You know, I'm just kind of winging it here. 
right now. So let me get an Allen, an Allen wrench and uh, get that bolt out of there. Wasn't uh, wasn't an Allen. It was a T30 Torx, Torx head screw, right here. And it it went through this hole inside the front panel to this bracket on the back here, this bracket, and uh, we don't have everything loose yet, but we're getting there. Well, call me crazy, but I can only see um, one attachment point here. I guess the other one was on the other side on a bracket. This bracket right here was attached to the uh, pillar that I took out of there. There's another one right here on the left side, right here. And that attaches to this top bracket here. And that seems to be, or appears to be, the only thing that holds the inverter electronics assembly. It's a huge heat sink here, by the way. Uh, that appears to be the only thing that holds it in, at the top bracket, so let me give it a try. Hallelujah. Finally uh, getting somewhere with this. Um, gonna have to cut some tie wraps here. This harness still tied down here. I think this assembly right here is probably the 12 volt regulator. A 12 volt output. You can't see it very well, but this is from the back side here, right down in here. That's what that plug, this plug right here, I think. I'll have to check it on the parts list later and see if that in, indeed is what I think it is. And I think it's a 12 volt regulator. And uh, I had to disconnect this too. Uh, interestingly, they have a stepper motor on the carburetor that controls the carburetor. And that plugged into the board here somewhere. I forget now where the hell it was, but oh, right here. It's got a pendant cable here. All right, so I'm still not done yet. And I'm just realizing that I may actually have to, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think ahead here, but I still can't get at that screw. There's a damn rubber block in the way. And uh, I'm thinking I might, I might have to loosen the motor mounts and jack the front of the engine up a little bit to slide that thing off. Unbelievable. Unreal. All right. And so um, this is the 12-volt regulator. It's held on with just one bolt one screw, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's on the, it goes on the back of this plate right here. This is in the way and the plate itself is in the way. I'll have to remove the plate. That's why I removed the regulator so that I have to get that plate out of the way and hopefully I can slide it back even further because now I can see the, uh, you know, I can see the coils right there. If I can get to the top screw but the bottom you know, if I don't take that plate out, the bottom will be a problem. This bracket was somewhat of a bitch to get out of here because you see the uh, this screw is too close to the motor mount here. And you can hardly get a socket on it. You can force it on there, but you can get up only so far and then uh, you can't get the screw out. So what I'm going to have to do later is with the Dremel tools, cut a, cut the corner out here a little bit so you can get a socket on this. Otherwise, I'll never get that thing back in there. So this is, looks like the, it's the uh, bracket for the battery box, and it's also uh, it holds the 12-volt uh, regulator. Now we got that. Perseverance pays off. So finally got got it pushed back and out of the way. And uh, 
got two screws here and I gotta take a close look at it. It doesn't look like it's loose so not electrically it's open. I'm sure I should read some resistance uh, through the coil so I'm gonna replace the ignition too because to be safe you really should do it in pairs because uh, the ignition module probably could take this out and vice versa a shorted coil could take out the ignition module so I mean I'm not gonna go through all this work twice so there you go let's get it out okay uh, in the interest of uh, um, giving you guys a little education in the event that you don't know and you don't have a spark and you're wondering why um, this generator uses uh, a CDI ignition capacitive discharge ignition and um, it also uses what they call a source um, stator or stator and a source stator will supply AC voltage to the CDI ignition and that's why you should be able to start this generator without any battery so usually a CDI ignition will either be powered by a battery or it will be powered by uh, the stator directly with what they call a source coil. It's uh, a coil dedicated just for ignition. So in order to allow this thing to start without a battery, they use a source coil. The way the ignition works, uh, and I'm going to give you just a top level view here. Uh, let, me, let me show you where the ignition is. I think I pointed it out once before. Uh, this is my dark side here and uh, and everything in here is black so it's hard to see things but that's the uh, CDI ignition right there and what's still connected here not connected but goes through some open connectors here uh, uh, at least two of these wires it goes to the stator and that's the AC input to this when you pull a rope when you pull a rope on this thing generates AC and that AC powers the uh, CDI ignition and after a couple of pulls it has enough power stored in the uh, capacitor to discharge through the uh, ignition coil. Uh, the way it uh, determines when, let me move back around here to the front, the way it determines when to fire the spark plug coil or the timing so to speak is um, it has a reluctor on the flywheel here. It's called a reluctor. Uh, let me digress a little bit. There's two kinds of ignition systems, CDI ignition systems. Um, the most modern makes use of a, not a reluctor, but a magnet and a Hall effect sensor. And uh, the magnet uh, rotates on the flywheel just, just as this is positioned here. Imagine this is a magnet. Uh, Hall effect sensor um, detects magnetism, detects a field of mag magnetism as the flywheel rotates. And that's how they trigger the ignition. Um, that's a little bit more modern than what they're doing here. This is the traditional uh, pickup coil reluctor type trigger and um, maybe I mentioned it once before maybe I didn't I, I don't remember this is the coil here okay coil assembly I should say I've already taken it apart it's kind of loosey-goosey here but um, on this particular uh, generator there's two components on here. There's the ignition coil and then there's a pickup coil. Now this is the pickup coil. This could be mounted anywhere. It doesn't need to be mounted along with the ignition coil. They did it as a matter of convenience. It shares the same mounting but they're completely two different things. This is called a trigger coil 
a pulse coil, I don't know, it goes by several different names, but um, it, it, it always does the same thing. What it does is it's got a magnet, uh, un unlike the other ignition I explained, this is a reluctor. This has an internal magnet to it, and i got a washer stuck to it right now. And um, it has some current flowing through it from the CDI ignition. And when the flywheel is rotating, this reluctor interrupts the magnetic field and it produces a signal. And a signal sent back to the CDI ignition. And you see there's only one wire attached to this. Sometimes they have two. Um, when you see one wire, you can assume that the other side of the coil is attached to the metal frame, which it's supposed to be here. Now this one is open. It's completely open. I read it with an ohmmeter and it's open and that's why this generator didn't run. And um, I think I mentioned once before I put up a, a you know, a, a message on the screen uh, somewhere in a video regarding uh, my anxiety that uh, it's possible that I ordered a coil, which is available by the way, it just says assembly coil, ignition coil. I ordered that from Harbor Freight and it cost 25 bucks. My biggest fear is that it's not going to come with the pickup, okay, because these are two separate components. And I'm sure you've been in a situation in your lifetime where you've bought a part and uh, they tell you to reuse the old part, uh, you know, uh, t to make make something functional. So you buy a brand new part, and it comes missing something, and they tell you, well, you reuse the old part from, you know, whatever, whatever you work on. And that's my biggest fear right now. I don't know if this pickup coil is going to come with this uh, ignition coil that I ordered from Harbor Freight. I'll know Tuesday. But other than that, once we get the pickup coil in here, I'm 100% certain that this thing is going to run. And so we'll just end it now, and there'll be a part two when I uh, get the pickup coil and I start putting this thing back together. Um, of course, I'm going to check it for spark before I ever put it all back together again. But uh, if I have spark, then I'll put it back together, and we'll get it running, and I'll give it back to my friend.